next day I, I, I don't, his nature does not change. Therefore, God cannot be subjected to the same laws which he created. For instance, God created time. Therefore, he cannot be subjected to time. He does not pass through time. He doesn't get old. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get sleepy. He doesn't go through the same stages of time that we go through. He created air. Therefore, he doesn't need it. He created the sun. Therefore, he doesn't need his warmth. He doesn't get hot. He doesn't get cold. These things do not happen to God. God cannot put himself into a human body, come on this earth, be subjected to time, be subjected to, to hunger, be subjected to, to tiredness, be subjected to being whipped and beat and hurt. These are things that God cannot, by his very nature, be. Some people say, you know, uh, that God can do anything. And that is not a correct statement. Because there's, God can do anything that is permeant to his nature. For instance, God cannot go to hell. God cannot go to heaven. God cannot die. God wasn't born. God doesn't eat. There are certain things he cannot do because it would be against his nature. It would be against his Godship. It would make him less than God. So God can do anything except that which would make him less than God. Anything that is, and that's why in Islam he has attributes. Clearly laid out attributes which get, keep him as the title of God. Any attribute that can be attributed to human beings is something that cannot be attributed to God. But things that are attributed to God like mercy can be attributed to us. But anything that is attributed to us cannot be attributed to God because it would make him less than God. This is a very important point because People will try to refute you and say, well, God can do anything. But yes. we want to make this clear that the creator of the heavens and the earth, God Almighty, he doesn't do things that are not, for instance, if he had no beginning, he doesn't die now. Yeah, all right? So if he's the most just, he's not going to do injustice. So we, his attributes of being uh, self-sufficient, so that means he now he's not going to be needy of somebody. No. Uh, for instance, now another example is God is the most, he's the truthful. Can yes. I say that? He's not going to lie. He's not going to lie. He, he cannot lie. He cannot lie. Uh, what else could we say? So really I want people to understand this point. He cannot lie. He cannot murder someone unjustly. God can't steal from someone. All of these things that we do that make us less than perfect, God cannot do because he is perfect. Mm -hmm. Anything that would subtract from his nature as being God, he cannot do. If something makes him less than God, then he cannot do it. Not only will he not do it, it's something he cannot do because it's, it's just like putting a north and a south magnet, two big magnets, they will not go together because they cannot coexist together. Natures that are not God-like cannot exist in God. They can only exist in his creation because he created those very natures. Those are things that we came about and we have derived in our own nature. Therefore, God cannot have them because he does not change. God is not like one way today and then he wakes up another way tomorrow. And that is another reason why the Trinity cannot be. God would not be one, 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 one forever and ever. And then all of a sudden, oh, I decide I'm going to be three today. Or three and one or one and three or however you want to do the math. He does not change in the middle of, of the whole scenario and say, you know what, oh, I'm going to change the whole method of salvation. Got to be consistent. God is very consistent. He is a consistent uh, uh, God. He does not change. Therefore, we know for sure he's not going to change his method of salvation. The method of salvation has always been the same, is that you have to go to God directly by showing that you are worthy of forgiveness, by working and earning forgiveness, and therefore he forgives you and then doing good deeds. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it's always going to be. Nothing is going to change in the middle. The end is never going to change. This is going to be the method of salvation. And when Jesus Christ returns, which is also a tenet of our faith, that we believe Jesus Christ will return to this earth, he will make these things very clear. The first thing he will do is he will break the crosses. I was not crucified. The second thing is he will kill the swine, saying that I never broke the law of Moses. I came to teach the law of Moses, therefore I never broke it. And these are all the things that he will come to explain, that I am not God, I am not the Son of God, do not worship me, I did not break the law of Moses, and then he's going to command people to follow the way of Islam as a Muslim. So that was number two now we covered. Number two. Before we go to the number one reason why Jesus, peace be upon him, cannot be the creator of the heavens and earth, I want to stop here for a moment and discuss really quickly what we are trying to do here is to help give the true nature of of who God is. Yes. That he's not a man, definitely. He yes. cannot be a man. All right? Yes. But now, when we make the testimony of faith, 
because there's probably some people that have been following the show for a while, and now we want to emphasize that there's a negation and affirmation. Yes. We're making a negation here. La ilaha illallah. Yes. That we're negating any other deity, that nothing in this creation can be the creator. There's only one true creator. Yes. So let's talk about this a little bit. So now the people, because we don't want to throw someone totally off and say, where do I go from here? Yes. We want to give them something else to come to. Absolutely. And we want to know people that we're not, because some people may think that we're just bashing one certain way. And it's, it's not that. We are trying to show the true essence of God and Jesus Christ. We're actually sitting here in defense of Jesus. This is the whole purpose of me coming up with this subject, was that I love Jesus very much. And I want to defend his nature because he would have abhorred people having worshipped him, which we will see in just a moment. But the negation and affirmation is what we've been talking about. The first part of La ilaha illallah is La ilaha, which means that there is no other God. There is no God that has right to be worshipped in Allah except the one true God. That is what we are trying to state, that there is nothing under the heavens or earth. There's no angels, no man, no beast, no idols that has right to be worshipped except the one true God, the creator of everything. That is the first part of affirmation that someone has to come to in Islam, and that's what we're trying to bring them to. That there's one God, He's the creator of everything, He's the only one that deserves to be worshipped. He created you without asking anyone's permission. He did not have to ask your father and mother to make you. He did not have to ask Jesus to make you. He did not have to ask Moses to make you. Therefore, you have to ask no one in order to worship Him. You go to Him alone, by yourself, worship Him as one, as the Creator. And then when you realize that there is one God, then you have to figure out what is His message. What does He want from me? And that's where God's messengers come in. And for the humanity, now, that messenger would be Muhammad, who was someone that Jesus foretold of. Jesus very clearly in the New Testament foretold of the coming of Muhammad as the last and final messenger and as the mercy unto mankind. And He is the one who told us how we should live. And it's nothing new. Everyone thinks that Islam is such a weird and, and new and different, it's way out there. But if you really, really study the way of Jesus, if you study the way of Moses, if you study the way of Abraham, if you go to the Bible and do your real research, you'll see that all we're doing is affirming the ways of old. All we have done is taken, we have not ticked the clock back on, on, on the world, as people say, we have stepped back in time. No, we have stepped back to worshiping God in the way that He needs to be worshipped, and we have stepped back to living a life that is in tune with the way He wants it to be lived. That doesn't mean we want to ride around on camels and, and, and do away with technology and cell phones. We need these things. I have a car, I have a cell phone, I have all of these things that we need. This, that's the part of the time. But when it comes to my direct relationship with God, we have to go back to the way the prophets worshipped Him. And that's what Islam does. What do we mean? Because I keep saying on every show, worship the Creator, not His creation. What do we mean when we say worship the Creator alone? What do we actually mean? That worshiping the Creator alone comes from the word Islam, which means that you submit your entire self to doing what God wants you to do alone. That is the essence of worshiping, deciding that whatever God wants from me, that is what I'm going to do. And that's what Jesus Christ did his entire life. If you research his life, it was entirely that whatever God wanted from him, he did it. That is the essence of a Muslim. If God wants me to pray five times a day, that is what I do. And that is not even enough. That's the way a Muslim should feel. That's the way anyone who loves God should feel. Is that there's not enough I can do for God for creating me. If He wants me to fast during the month of Ramadan, I fast out of gratefulness. If He wants me to uh, abstain from, from, from drinking or abstain from sex without marriage, then I do that. Because that's the way of life that is pleasing to Him. And that's what we mean by worship Him. That means you make every step of your daily life in accordance with what God wants from you. So basically, you become a slave to God. Basically. Because you're a slave to somebody, let's be you're honest. You're always a slave you're, to somebody or something. To somebody. You're a slave to, to uh, your boss at work. You're a slave to that woman who's taking the money out of your pocket every day. Or to the money. To the money. So you're a slave to something. Yes. So we're saying, look, God is saying, be a slave to Him. Yes. Let Him dictate your life. You call on Him alone. He's the only one that can forgive your sins if you're in distress. You're not self-sufficient. You need a creator. You yes. need someone to turn to. So you turn to him alone. You pray only to him. Yes. You sacrifice only to, only him. to him. You give charity in his, name, in his name. Not to look good in front of the people or the congregation. You only no. do it to please him. Absolutely. And you fast in yes. his name. You abstain from alcohol, drugs for him. You do yes. it because 
he doesn't benefit from that. You benefit from it, yes. correct? Yes. And you don't lie. You don't steal. You don't cheat. Everything, God is good. He only accepts good. So by 